And we're going to end up taking some time right now to end up discussing arguably one of my favorite games. And if you've paid any attention, um, you don't need to end up guessing too hard what the heck that is. Vampire the Masquerade. And I've been involved in a game that is been a year running. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade YouTube experiment. Start by the Gentleman Gamer. Now, that being said, I've learned a lot in that time. And I've learned a lot from other players as I've actually gone into side games with them and been involved in all sorts of places, every place from Montreal to fictional cities like New Serum to London. You know, it's been a blast. And I wanted to end up talking about some of the things that I currently end up thinking about when it comes down to running a campaign. This might take a while. It's a lot of material to go through, and I'm kind of ad-libbing most of this. So, But I did take a few notes just to keep it somewhat coherent, if we can. So where do you start when it comes down to Vampire the Masquerade? Well... After you've chosen your setting, which is a whole nother video unto itself, we got to end up starting with your player characters, the neonates, the maybe even fledglings. These are the characters that are the point or focal point of the story. But I always start them as neonates. A few reasons for this, okay? Neonates have an advantage in the modern knights because they understand the modern world. Elders follow how to touch with it. Even Ancilla have this tendency of slipping behind the times. You know, even a hundred year old kindred, I mean, you end up talking to most 50 year olds and they don't understand what a meme is. So you're going to end up finding that, especially in this day and age where things change so quickly, you're going to need to end up keeping up. Neonates have that advantage. Okay. The second thing is, is that unlike elders who take on decades in order to have a plan click into position, the neonates still are very much operating like a human being. While they know they can potentially live forever, the thinking is not yet set like that. They can try to be, but more often than not, neonates are all about the now. What can I do now? And even now is a relative term. Now means sometime in the next five years, which in kindred terms is blitzing. It's rushing. I mean, when you have forever to end up really considering, five years is a drop in the bucket. But it doesn't feel like that to you, not yet anyway. You, know, you haven't spent that much time. The other thing I'm going to say is that neonates, just establishing yourself in a city can be a challenge unto itself when you really think about it. I mean, most cities... Fall in any section of the city at all, if it has any importance, even not, not importance, is probably claimed by another kindred. Now, of course, the prince holds domain over the entire city, but what about, you know, the rough area of Hittam? What about the train tracks? What about those people in public yeah, transit areas are not so public, you know, buses going to other cities. What about airports? What about, you know, the nice condo in the center of yeah, town? What about, you know, all these different sections? There is almost guaranteed to be a kindred who holds domain there. And in that domain, they are an authority. When you end up thinking in this regard, you have to understand the importance of domain. Domain is exclusive hunting rights. A neonate could quite easily end up dead or worse 
just because he decided to feed in a location that was the domain of another. And, well, technically, sealing a person in concrete and dropping them at the bottom of the ocean doesn't count as a yeah, right of destruction because the kindred isn't technically dead. They're just going to be down there for a really long time till the concrete finally rodes away. Then, maybe, just maybe, they might end up here being able to hit, swim to shore and end up finding themselves a couple thousand years down the line. But no tradition would be broken in that regard, or at least in some uh, circles. It's very much up for debate. Mm, that's kind of one of the things about uh, elders. They found plenty of loopholes in their own rules in order to end up keeping the neonates in line. The other thing is, is that, especially if you're introducing a new city, the neonates don't know the power structure of the city. They don't know who owns what domain. They don't know who owns what power base. They don't know who is it that has the that ghoul that's in the local police department or the health institution. Who is it that uh, has found power with the health inspectors? Who is it that owns the crematorium and the funeral home? Who is it that owns the airport, as I said? You know, all of these are points of power. And if it can give you even a modicum of power, some kindred has already found a way to exploit it. And the neonates are coming in fresh. They don't know a damn thing about kindred politics. So they got to figure it out. It's just, Part of it is figuring out ignorance and knowledge. Now, the neonate doesn't need to be completely naive. They can start with a wealth of knowledge. I mean, if they're sire and they're teaching them anything. But particularly take time to really emphasize if you were a ghoul in a previous time you probably know the names of the seven clans you might even have heard a whisper or two of your sire's sire you might know the harpy if your sire is particularly well connected not that you know them personally but you know their name you know their face you know this is not somebody to trifle with and you know it's somebody whose opinion matters but you don't know everything. In fact, you know hardly enough outside of there's one place you can feed, the rack, a place where any kindred can feed as so long as they behave, and that they need to end up abiding by the traditions. Memorize the traditions. They are going to be the thing that saves your life because if you play well to them, it becomes so much harder to deal with you. Now, that being said, a lot of the vampires will have these kindred organized supposedly into coteries. Coteries are not your traditional party, like you were talking about Dungeons and Dragons. And unless an elder establishes a coterie saying, these neonates will work together to perform X, Y, and Z, they're just as likely to work and play off each other only because they're all at the bottom rung. You know, think of them... Uh, how do I put this? Think of them like uh, dishwashers in a major head, head kitchen. Now, they probably get along just because they're all on the same level, which is not much of anything at all. Let's talk about the setup. The neonates have little understanding of the kindred of their city, outside of maybe their sire and really active members of their own clan. Keep in mind, up until this point, they were a fledgling. The fledgling doesn't leave the sire's side because the sire typically knows, <laughs> at least if they're worth their salt, that they're, as, they're responsible for their fledgling's behavior. And anything that might constitute as a breach 
might end up costing them their lives and the lives of their supposed child. Now, when you have a lot of enemies because you've screwed up in court, or maybe you are in rivalry with another kindred over a particular resource or power, they're going to look for anything that can hamstring you. And going after the child is one of the best ways to do it. That's one of the things that can put a huge bullseye on any neonate. Keep that in mind. Outside of their clan, no one should be trusted. And this should be very evident because you work for your clan. And your clan, whilst maybe supporting the prince, isn't doing everything for free. They're getting something out of it. After all, one hand washes the other. One thing I would say is end up leaving the backgrounds that are kindred involved off the table in character creation. There's a few reasons for this. One, domain, the you have exclusive feeding rights here, and you can you have rulership here, you are recognized. Uh, might be a little bit much for a neonate to handle when he doesn't understand the game. He doesn't understand who's who. And, you know, suddenly Lord, when somebody walks into your door, you realize they're kindred. You try and lord over them, and you're accidentally talking to the prince because you've never seen him face to face for whatever reason. Might be a bad idea. Or maybe the sheriff. Or even worse, a harpy. Or just a guard or something like that. Well, Seneschal, pardon. Keep in mind, the neonates, they're the hands of their clan. They're the ones who get stuff done. And they're going to be fairly active compared to any of their other vampire kindred who are content in plodding away and slowly weaving those power structures, using their own power structures to weave more and more, just trying to spread it out. And become powerful, become influential, managing to keep themselves very important. And because they've been doing this for years, neonates just showing up, they don't have these advantages. Stuff like herd is a real chore to build. That's an adventure unto itself. I mean, if you really stop and end up asking, like, how the heck do you make a herd? Well, you could always kidnap a few people tie them up and you know hide them in some basement somewhere and maybe feed them maybe you're a medical student and you just have them on a perpetual iv trip or uh you know put them as comatose with uh, a tube down in their throat but somebody's gonna notice someone's missing eventually it's gonna start drawing suspicion that turns into a whole plot unto itself. Same thing. Let it build. Let them know who these people are. Knowledge is power. So reward the characters taking merits that give them insight. And I'm not talking necessarily about oracles or anything like that. I'm talking about just, you know, like I said earlier, the ghoul example. Ghoul is a wonderful bit because you've been hanging around not only as a fledgling, but as a ghoul. Now, keep in mind, most ghouls, you know, you use them till they're no good and then toss them away. You got embraced. You earned that right to peek a little bit more behind the curtain. Because most ghouls don't know a damn thing. They do as they're told, and so long as you end up feeding them their little bit of vitae, that little bit of the life's blood, well, that's all good, but once they start fiending over it, you know, they will go to any depraved lengths to get it. And that's useful, if not a little dangerous. You've been treated like this for a while. You might know just how dirty it gets. You might recognize a face or two, but just try and end up taking these bits like an Elysium regular. How nice would it be if you're the neonate who knows the faces in the room and you know that the other neonates don't? You can end up making some headway for yourself. 
Yeah, most definitely. Let them be rewarded for them being more informed than the average member of the neonate population. That gives them a point of difference and makes them very, very good. Lastly, in the setup, make your allies, your contacts, and your you know, retainers fleshed out. These are not external puppets where you just wave your hand and this is done. No, these are relationships. These are people you can talk to, not necessarily about your condition, but maybe end up getting some inside track knowledge on a topic or a particular event. You might have a few people who've been there through the thick and thin, or... Maybe you have that lover who you just can let go. So you decide to bring them into this world of darkness with you. And now they're willing to follow you through hell and high water, but eventually they need something from you. Their motivations are almost as important as the characters in this regard. These are the most important people to the neonates, personally. They need to be as dynamic as the players at all times. For the first session, keep it mundane. You know why you keep it mundane? Because the characters and the players know it. A drug deal gone bad, maybe uh, giving somebody a friendly uh, reminder by breaking their legs, stealing important documents from a law firm, Maybe just taking a car and running over somebody's mailbox. These are all things that, well, the kindred might not know why they're being asked to do this. But they will understand in time if they're insightful, if they're clever, if they care enough to learn. Because what they are is the hand pushing the dials and changing things but not having enough understanding or control in order to do it and get away with it these are tough things to do and if you're just coming in as a neonate you're gonna have to figure out a lot of things and you're gonna have to do a lot of things you don't want to do it, it gets pretty bad let them experience that because suddenly they end up stand that they're at the bottom of the heap. Their sire might end up knowing why they're doing it. Maybe something else is pushing it. But they're always a puppet to somebody else's will because they don't know why these events are being asked of them. But they might be curious. So how do they go about it, right? Well, that's on them to figure it out. That's part of figuring out kindred existence, and that's what a neonate is doing, trying to situate. So when you're rewarding your fine child or as the sire, what do you give them to show that you were <laughs> pleased or at least glad that they can do what's expected of any decent kindred? Talking like a venture keep it mundane right same thing as the uh, what they're dealing with and then keep in mind this is just the first few sessions it may be something like money um a one-time access to blood and if you've played a lot with a lot of domain in your city Blood's pretty hard without going into some very dangerous and dark territory. And it's, <laughs> as you'll discover in time, it gets a little bit weird, more difficult down the line. Maybe it's being somebody important as they're taught some knowledge in court. Maybe it's a boon, a tiny one. Now, don't, don't let them have too much, but just give them a boon. A little bit of something to play with. Maybe it's just them trying to prove their worthiness of blood. But when this is all happening during that first session, keep notes of everything that went right for them and everything that went wrong for them. Because you're going to want to follow up. Because mistakes happen.
They do. Being the kin of vultures, most Tanya kindred will descend upon anybody who slipped up, especially a neonate. They maybe they're here and trying to make their clan, the neonates clan, or the neonates sire lose face in the court. You know, maybe to blackmail the neonate saying, you know, you did this job. There was a little bit of a screw up, but you know, we can overlook that if you do this for me, or I can, you know, talk to the harpy. Yeah. Well, for a neonate, you're walking that razor's edge where you're still trying to end up situating yourself. Anyone who wants you dead could probably get away with it. And, you know, sorry to say, politics are very, very rough in world of darkness. So, it can get pretty bad for you there as well. Maybe they're trying to wrangle a boon out of the player, right? You know, oh, well, you know that a little bit of evidence you left behind and the police now have in their evidence locker, you know, you could try and get it. But look how well it went for you the first time. Let a professional take care of this kid. You'll pay it back to me. I know you will. Because you're going to owe me big for this one. Depends on how they wheel and deal. <laughs> Remember that the neonates are the hands of the clan and the Camarilla. But not all of the clans see that here neonate is useful. A lot of question the usefulness of the hair neonates. And how their hair naivete, naivete is an embarrassment. Showing their sires neglect, making them unfit. Anything to him make them look better than their political rivals. Yes, this is unfair, but it's motivation for the neonates to stop playing blind and get off that bottom rung as little more than a lick. If you give a boon to a player, as a reward of any kind. Make sure it's as small as possible. If they can come up with a way to use it to their benefit, great. If not, maybe their sire knows of a use for it. Wouldn't be the first time that uh, sire ended up using his child's boon to get something done. And that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you can use one boon to end up at late someone or if you can use one boon for someone else to trade up. If you're clever, that person's probably going to be you as well. If not, you'll learn this yeah, currency of kindred quickly becomes, or yeah, you'll learn about the kin, currency of kindred quickly before you take on too much debt. That being said, a lot of a sire a kindred of influence, a, anyone really that t actually cares, might take the time to make sure that the neonate's education, but that requires a friend in court. And that friend in court isn't doing it for free either. Might be of the same clan and wanting to end up upholding the clan, but you don't want to make too many mistakes because eventually you start realizing you're costing more than you're putting in. And, well, the second that happens... It's not hard for an Ancilla to end up flicking and head neonate off the board. <sighs> Lastly, when it comes down to following up, remember, while the neonates don't understand the ramifications of their actions, <laughs> drop tiny hints about it. Drop those small things that let them know that there's some bigger picture. Maybe if they're insightful, observant, particularly witty or intelligent, they might end up noticing patterns or noticing little snippets that might hint to a far greater plan being in motion. And all they are is just the errand boy that ended up flicking a switch, pushing a person the right way way getting clear intel 
but let don't let them see everything. Just let them know that it's there. I mean, when you're told to steal an important document and you end up reading it aloud, you end up reading it as gibberish, but reality is it's code of missive. And you end up finding out that later on, this is this little message can be traced to the mayor's office. Well, suddenly you're going to want to figure out, well, who the hell did you just piss off that has some grounds to be dealing with the mayor of the city? That can get big very, very quickly. But as they move up, they get the slightly bigger picture. Suddenly they realize, you know, the drug bust was really to upset a political ally of another kindred. And now the neonates are put in a position where they're painted into a particular corner. And not all of the kindred, not all of the neonates are going to end up on the same lines. This causes internal conflict, which at the end of the day, you're a solitary predator. You just need to be around people because that's the food source. And you need to be around other kindred because, quite frankly, eternity alone can sometimes be referred to as living hell or unliving hell in this case. Introduce anything that's heavily important slowly. Remember that what, you, what the players are doing is effectively peeling the onion of the city's camp politics and power structure and as they understand it they may come to realize previous actions that they've done have consequences and well if that knowledge gets out they may be in deep trouble on the other hand they may have just done something glamorous and get that small bit of recognition just that tiniest bit in court where maybe their name was dropped But understand that they couldn't have seen this coming because they didn't know. That lack of knowledge needs to be highlighted so that they realize how much knowledge is gained suddenly gives them a little bit of power. Just because they know what buttons they can push, what buttons they can't push. And as they do, they start weaving their way up the court. They start building themselves up which is really freaking tough when you end up a game right down to it. I mean, moving up in the world, domains are difficult to set up. Sure, the prince ended up giving you this apartment block. You can exclusively feed there. But how are you going to defend it from ghouls? How are you going to defend it from those who can obfuscate and just disappear? How do you keep an eye on it without letting anyone know that you're there? How do you use this? How do you protect it? How do you show that you are the authority in your domain? Because it's a nice concept, but quite frankly, if the gangrel doesn't like what you have to say, regardless of it being your domain, if he can get away with offing you, because you pissed him off and then just end up feeding on whoever he likes. There's very little you can do about it. You might be in deep, deep trouble. Understand that political rivals take notice of your, your player's mistakes. They observe. They try and end up finding some way to exploit it. That being said, it's good to make friends in court. But no friend is inevitably going to become synonymous with betrayal. Because every kindred is actually out for themselves. They want to spout loyalty to the Camarilla and clan. But that's denying what their inherent nature is. Why would they betray them? Well, that's up to your game, but understand that it is a possibility another one that's just as important is popular opinion harpies can make or break a kindred regardless of 
who they might be. They have the ear of some or they have a tongue in the ear of every single person who's important and they hear everything that's going on. So when it comes down to your harpies, you might want to end up making sure that the players understand just how important public opinion is because when the harpy declares you as an upholder of the masquerade willing to put their mind and body on the line to uphold our fair traditions mentions you by name other kindred are going to take notice for good or ill but don't mistake it they will take notice i would also say don't be afraid to put your kindred at odds primarily your neonates i should say Simple example, the core dynamic I always loved. Bruja historically have very, very few reasons to like a Ventru. But the Bruja and the Ventru in your uh, little group, they're neonates. They don't know any better. Maybe they hit it off really well. But then all of a sudden... They start garnering attention. Now all of a sudden we see a neonate of Clan Ventru assisting a neonate of Clan Bruja because, you know, they're in it together. But then what does that look like? What is that collaboration telling the other clans? As the Harpy said, or as the Harpy would demonstrate, keeping up appearances and keeping people's social good graces is very important when dealing with the court. After all, we are talking about politics. So what do you think is going to happen? Eventually, they're going to their elders are going to start using their these neonates to jab at one another to try and do some fencing. And it's going to be sweet. Because they're going to have to come to that conclusion, do they hold on to each other? They hold the clan, and what is it that motivates them? Lastly, on a little bit more of an improv note, I want you to consider, just for a minute, when you are establishing as a neonate, you're being run ragged. Not necessarily because there's a firefight in the street or a break-in or anything like that, but you need to find ways to feed, maintain survival, stabilize. If you are in a position where you can't consistently feed, if you're in a position where you don't know the score, if you're in the position where things aren't setting up right, and you have not built the fallback plan to make sure that you're going to be okay, well, best way I can end up telling you is uh, <laughs> this is World of Darkness after all. 